Blender Manager here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a procedural chain inside of Blender. So let's delete the default cube first and press 7 on the number pad to go to the top view. Now we're going to shift A and grab a torus. And let's open up the panel and let's change both the major and minor segments to both equal 12. And for the major radius, we'll leave that at 1 meter, but for the minor radius, we'll change that to something like 0 0.45 meters. And what I want to do is uh, change it from shaded mode to wireframe. And you can do that with the shortcut or going to the top right and selecting this here. And now what I want to do is press um, one on the keyboard, not the number pad, and takes us to vertice mode, which is this icon here. Now we can drag select over the top half of this torus, so we can only select the top vertices. And now we're gonna hit Y to separate the selection. And what I wanna do is press G, and then Y to move it in the Y axis up and down. And once we're satisfied with the shape that's closest to a link, we're going to go back into shaded mode and let's switch from uh, vertices to edge mode. And we can double click any of these rings to select the entire ring. Shift select the other one. And we're going to right click and go to bridge edge loops. Now let's do the same for this side. So we're just going to double click this ring. Shift double click this ring, right click, bridge edge loops, just that simple. So now what we want to do is duplicate this link along the axis. So let's go to the modifier tab here and let's add an array to it. And let's hit seven on the number pad, not the keyboard, so we can go to the top view. And naturally what you see is if we move this um, count up, you can see what's actually happening is creating duplicates, but in the wrong axis. So let's change the factor in X to zero and let's just change the Y and you'll see what's going on. And this is what we need to happen. So instead of guessing, I'm gonna give you guys some values to put in and we can put in 0 0.590 and that's gonna be exactly what we want it to be for this. So instead of guessing how many counts we need to get a certain distance by length, what we can do is change this to match a curve. So let's change the fit type to fit curve. And what this will allow us to do is use a spline to guide the count. So let's go back into object mode if we're already there and let's shift A and let's just go to curve and let's go to path. And we're gonna create a path. And what I wanna do is hit R, Z, and 90, which will rotate this 90 degrees and the Z axis, which will be up and down. Now, what I wanna do is hit G and we can just um, hit X to slide this in the X axis so it's not on top of our first link. And if we hit tab, we can go into edit mode and we can see some vertices here. What I wanna do is drag select over four of these and move them up with the move tool here on the left and just drag this arrow up. And then I'm gonna space out the rest of the vertices as well. So drag select, move up, drag select, rinse and repeat to somewhere around here. So lastly, let's just space out these last vertices. And once you're satisfied, let's hit tab to exit edit mode and enter back into object mode. And let's reselect our torus. And under array, let's go to where it says curve, select the eyedrop tool, and on the 3D viewport, we're just gonna select it. And you see that? Now let's select the path once again and hit tab to enter edit mode. And if we move around this top vertice, you'll see how this now manipulates the amount of torsus that follows that length. But there's only one thing that's wrong with this at this point, and that's we can't go from left to right to adjust it to follow. We can only make it go up and down. So once we're done with this, let's hit tab to go back into object mode. Now back in object mode, we need to start rotating every other link. And to do that, we're gonna add a null. So let's hit shift A, let's go down to empty and choose plane axes. And with that still selected, we're gonna hit R to rotate Y, Y axis and hit 90. So it'll rotate it in the Y axis 90 degrees. Now let's reselect our torus and then we're gonna go into the modifier tab here and let's just select this object offset here. Let's check it and then we're gonna open up this layer and let's go where it says object, choose the eyedropper tool and on the 3D viewport, we're gonna choose that null and now we have the effect we're looking for. So next thing I wanna do is just collapse the array modifier. Don't apply it, just collapse it and I'm gonna reselect this chain. Let's go to add modifier. And on the right where it says deform, we're gonna go and select the curve modifier. And once we have that selected, where it says curve object, we're gonna grab our 
eyedropper tool and we're going to grab that path with the vertices that we had earlier and that's going to reposition it just the way we want it and it's already in the form x axis so we're going to leave it there now we're going to reselect our path go to edit mode and we can start to move around these vertices in any way we want it to move and just in case you want to start adding on to this and have it more procedural you can hit e which is extrude and you can just keep extruding in any direction you want and now it's fully procedural and this is a really powerful thing hopefully you guys can see the benefit of using this so you can use it for future projects and if you like this and you found it very helpful and useful please consider giving the video a like a thumbs up commenting if you liked it and i'll catch you in the next one